Hello all and welcome, and I am the MGTOW Philosopher. In this video, I would like to talk about the subject of love and how it is utter horseshit and akin to eating a lot of chocolate. Now, this word is bandied about a lot, mostly by women, talking about love, love, love. She wants to fall in love. She wants to meet somebody she loves. She wants to experience romantic love and be swept off her feet by a white knight on a white horse in shining silver armor and He's going to pick her up and whisk her away and open all the doors and pull out all the chairs. And she's going to have these overwhelming feelings of love for him. And he's going to feel the same way for her. And they're going to live happily ever after in a love ensconced home of pink silk and purple velvet and everything's going to be divine and wonderful for the next 80 years and they're both going to die within a few hours of each other. Their love is so strong. Oh, how precious. Unfortunately, this is utter horseshit. Love itself is a fantasy. It doesn't exist. Trust me, it does not exist. All love is is lust. Love is lust. You want to fuck and that's it. Women don't know it because they have no rational reasoning and they go all on their feelings. She feels this undeniable sense of love for you. It's an undeniable sense of right of lust. But she identifies it as love because she doesn't have the logic or reason or the self-awareness to dissect her feelings and figure out their source, where they're really coming from and what they really are. And a man, well, he feels love in the sense that Oh, he wants to fuck you, and then once he's fucked you, he either likes you or doesn't like you. And if he likes you and you're hot enough, he might make the abysmal mistake of getting into a relationship with you or marrying you, which would be the ultimate error. And then he's forced to live with his mistake forever or until he wisens up and gets a divorce. And let's hope the divorce is before 10 years have passed, or he'll be paying alimony forever. So love is not real. Now, of course, many of you might say, oh, my God, you're an evil man. You've been hurt by women. You're a cynic. You don't know. I think you felt love before and you got hurt. And now you just want to deny that it exists because you haven't found it again. Or you were disappointed or the person you love rejected you or some other feminist, boring, subjectivist, nonsense, wussy horseshit. That's a bunch of crap. And let me tell you something, by the way. If that was the truth, that would mean every man would believe what I do. And unfortunately, not all of them are smart enough to have reached the conclusions I have. Because they're too subjectivist. Going on emotion. And now they're sitting at home alone with their wife having the kids and getting all their money. A bunch of fucking morons. No, no, no. By the way, most men have been hurt by a woman. And the majority of those men are sitting at the home alone, wishing they could see their kids. And they can't because the bitch took them and then took all their money and then took the house and everything else. No, no, no. <laughs> For a woman, love is about things, okay? You might not believe this, but that's the case. Now, of course, there's exceptions to every rule, but so what? They do not disprove the rule. Some guy jumps out of a 20-story building and lives. That doesn't mean it's a good idea to jump out of a 20-story building. There are exceptions, but they're extremely rare. So you might ask yourself, where does this idea of love come from then? If love is not a real thing, why do so many people believe in it? Because many, many people are in love with the idea of being in love. They're in love with the picture, the imagery, the fantasy of it, the, 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 the potential future happiness that it brings in the picture within their mind. And they suffer from a form of confirmation bias, okay? And then they superimpose that imagined love onto whatever relationship they're in with somebody who evokes even a sparkle of feelings that could be considered love, lust, <coughs> really. And so that's all it is. It's you and your imagination. And most women out there are just in love with the idea of being in love. And they grew up on all these, you know, fairy tales and have in their mind the fairy tale wedding and the white gown that has the trailer behind it that's 40 feet long and 
the idea of the daddy giving them away and the mother crying and everybody crying and she's kissing Prince Charming and he's kissing her and she's finding the man of her dreams who just happens to be rich, tall, good looking and will provide for her forever. But of course, that's not why she loves him. No, it's because he's tall, dark, handsome, rich and <laughs> can provide for her because she can't think of any other reasons right now because she's overwhelmed by all of those. Yeah. Okay. So now we've established love is not real. And some of you out there still believe in it and you think you found it. You are fooling yourselves. Love is just a myth. Love is just a myth. It's a biochemical reaction. Okay. And it exists to pair bond with another human being. That's it. It's not anything that is logical, reasonable, rational in and of itself. You have to use logic and reason purposefully to analyze it, to look at it, see what it really is and what it isn't. And all love is, is lust. You've met somebody who you like. Yeah, they have qualities that are basically something you share. This is the very interesting thing about love. If love is anything, it is about self-love, not of another person. <laughs> this is a very interesting thing about love. We tend to be attracted to people who are like us, who are compatible with us. And in that sense, love is probably the most selfish emotion of all. Lust. Right. It's, it's, that's probably the only type of love, really, except for love for one's children. I would not deny love for one's children. But again, in many ways, that is a form of self-love because you are continuing the species. You are propagating. You are basically carbon copying yourself so that you will continue to live into the next generation and be immortal. So there is a lot of self-interest with kids. I'm not saying there isn't love with kids. I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, but most of that is, again, tied back into self-love and self-interest. So the feelings of romantic love are what I'm mainly speaking about. And romantic love and relationship love with somebody who is not blood kin related to you is all a lie. <sighs> let's, let's give an example from start to end. You'll meet some girls, say, in college, and, and you have a lot in common, and you have fun together, and she seems to be everything that you would want in a woman because she's <coughs> a female version of you. And so... You think you've met the one because it's so comfortable and easy being with her. Yes, 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 yes. And so you feel this love for yourself. Pair bond love with other people is bullshit. It doesn't exist. It's all about self-love in many ways. And the rest of it is just lust. Lust that you're mistaking for love. And fondness. And there can be fondness. You can be fond of and appreciate somebody's company, but conflating that with love is way, way big stretch, okay? Big stretch. Love doesn't really exist. Love is all about self-interest. It's in your self-interest to be around this person because, ooh, they make you feel so good because they're like you, because they're like you. It's all about you. So love is the most selfish emotion you could ever feel because it's totally self-serving. Okay? Totally self-serving. It's not about the other person. It's about you. All right? So that romantic love for other people doesn't exist. It's love for yourself, if anything. It's love and admiration for you. Now, as far as what happens, well, you, you, you decide to marry her once you graduate. Because, oh, you need to be with her and you as a man have to put your stamp on the contract, you have to legitimize that purchase and make sure that it's yours. Of course, that stamp is uh, pretty useless when divorce is so easy, when you can get no-fault divorce. For those of you that may not be American or may not be uh, wholly from a Western European country or may not be familiar with the term, no-fault divorce is simply that you can fuck up, you can cheat on your husband, you could cut his balls off, and you can divorce him, and you'll still get half his shit. Because you can't be held at fault. Which is, of course, perfect for women, because they're not held at fault to fault anyway. 
they're not uh, uh, accountable anyway. So that's perfectly tailored for women. So that's no fault of war. So when that's the case, marriage ceases to be useful because it's supposed to be there to make it more difficult to break up because a stable family, stable marriage is the foundation, the bedrock of Western civilization, which is being torn apart by feminist Nazis and uh, uh, multicultural Marxism. Regardless, uh, back to love. So you marry her, you're 22, 23, but you haven't gotten your career yet. You haven't accomplished your goals. Uh, now you're married though, and oh no, it's being married is actually making it more difficult to accomplish these things because women are expensive. And so maybe one of you hasn't found a job yet, so that one has to support the other. So you've just made it much more difficult. Now, of course, you're having to devote more and more of your free time to your partner instead of putting that free time into a career advancement and becoming successful. So getting married young even is anti-career, anti-success. And so love has actually destroyed much of your ability as a man to be successful. Oh, and of course, if you have a kid, too early, or a kid at all, well, boom, that's even more time. So the odds of you being successful are far slimmer if you get married young. Of course, getting married at all makes those odds far slimmer because you'll have far fewer resources and far less time to pursue your career. And so love itself is a destructive force in many cases. Romantic love is what I'm talking about. The idea of romantic love, which, which is what people are really in love with. Because when people talk about their feelings, when they talk about love, they can't actually describe it. It's very interesting how people, you ask them what love feels like, and they'll just give you these amorphous definitions and descriptions and what it feels like in terms of what they'd be willing to do. Like I'd be willing to give my life for this person. That's how much I love her. Uh, uh, but but that's not love. That's what you. That's some crazy shit you'd be willing to do because of it. What is the actual thing you are saying that you feel? What is it? Oh, I don't know. I would just feel it. <laughs> and I contest that that feeling has been conflated with something it isn't. It's been used to terminate as a term to define something that it is not. It's really just lust. And an intense protective need is a man to keep safe a woman. And that's a biological imperative. What I'm saying is that a lot of different things have been completed and put under the umbrella of romantic love. And that is not a real thing. Romantic love is made up. It is just a fiction, a fairy tale created to make both men and women want to get married. And it's conflated a lot of different instinctual feelings and thoughts and brought them together under one definition and then labeled it that way and then saying that thing is good that's what you want and then let's take that label and conflate it to mean things that it actually doesn't and then we're going to put that image onto the idea of romantic love and then we're going to sell that image boom 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 and we're going to bombard it into the minds of people until they believe that romantic love is this and that and that it's something that you should strive for and want and then girls young girls and boys get the idea of romantic love into their head and they think that's what they're buying into it's only when they get married that they find out it's something very much different and they feel buyer's remorse but then of course it's too late because you've signed a contract with a harpy that can steal half your shit just because she's bored with you so love is not only bullshit it's a scam it's false advertising it's a mislabeled thing it's an idea something someone made up to sell a crappy product it's, and it's fraud perpetuated on the public nothing more and it's an inconvenient fraud <laughs> that now makes it more difficult for the leftists and feminists to advance their agenda, which is why they've been attacking and destroying it and saying you don't need to get married. Now, for a long time, it was necessary to uh, stabilize 
society, and it was a foundation, a bedrock of Western civilization, and most civilizations, actually. It's only now that the leftist and the cultural Marxists have really ramped things up to a new level that, oh, now they have to destroy it because it's such a strong stabilizer, and the only way that they can take control of society to try and achieve the communist utopia that they think they can bring about, that now it's time to destroy, to destroy marriage. And so, of course, they are. And they've made it very difficult for people to want or need to get married. But the idea is still being pressed, of course, because it's a good way to steal men's resources and give them to people who are wholly irrational and unaccountable for their actions so that they'll spend lots of money and to make men more poor and disenfranchised than to enfranchise and make women more powerful. So in that sense, in modern times, it's a two-edged sword. And you still have men out there who are believing the indoctrination process. On one hand, they're being told, get married, get married, get married, get married. But on the other hand, the left is doing everything they can to actively undermine marriage while encouraging the lemmings to jump off the cliff. It's bad for them, it's bad for you, but we're encouraging you to jump off anyway because it's good for us because we're the sharks down at the, <laughs> in the water <laughs> waiting for your dumbass lemming ass to jump off the cliff so we can eat you when you hit the water. I mean, it's amazing to me how people fall for this love horse shit and believe it. But I suppose it shouldn't be. But it is surprising to me that any of you out there still believe it. Love itself is a red herring. It doesn't exist. It's just a made-up idea to get you in love with the idea of being married being in a relationship, because that's what stabilizes society. That's what creates the foundational bedrock part of our society that makes it stable, that makes it last, that creates the Western culture that we have. And unfortunately, it's not a viable idea anymore. It's not viable anymore. I mean, it was never real, okay? It was never real. Love was never a real thing. But it used to serve a purpose. It used to get people married and get them having kids and they would stay together. And, but now it, it, it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. It just gets men into bad situations where they lose all their shit. <laughs> so I'm, give, I'm telling you all the big secret. So though, for those of you who didn't know it, now you know that, that even love itself is a fairy tale. It was made up a long time ago. Throughout history, it's been reinforced to get people to marry. But those that have a brain know that it's horseshit. Uh, what was that movie, The Devil's Advocate, where uh, Al Pacino, playing the devil, said that love is nothing more than, it's, a, it's the same as eating large quantities of chocolate. Now, have any of you actually tried doing this? Because if you do, you will find some amazing, amazing similarities. And you'll just say to yourself, after you eat that two pounds of chocolate, you'll say, Holy shit, this is the same fucking thing. I've been lied to my whole life. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> but it's too late because you fell for it hook, line, and sinker. And now you're in a relationship that if you try to get out, it will cost you more money than you could possibly imagine and your soul as well. So in that sense, you are in fact in a pact with the devil. <sighs> I am the MGTOW philosopher revealing these enlightening truths to you. And I wish you a good day. Take care.